Hey everybody, this is GGBS. Time for my Super Bowl picks. Guys, I'm so excited. I, I've, done, I've done pretty well this playoffs. Not gonna brag, but I have gone about 8-2, which is pretty crazy if you think about it. That means I've only lost two games. The only games I got wrong was one in the wild card and one in the championship. Went perfect in the divisionals. I'm doing pretty great in playoffs. I mean, I normally don't do great. I normally really kind of suck at playoff picks. But this year, I'm really kind of killing it. So, we'll continue what we're doing, I guess. Um, The Rams are playing, obviously, the Bengals in the Super Bowl. Rams favor by four points on NBC. And, sorry guys, I'm not in my usual setup. Uh, I actually had to record this video really quickly because i actually do have a test tomorrow that i gotta study for and a test on tuesday and a test on wednesday so it's it's kind of a crazy week for me not to mention i had three tests last week so yeah but the interesting thing about the rams right obviously injuries are fascinating in the super bowl because you know if you're somewhat healthy you're probably going to play because it's the biggest game of the year um but you the Rams get Daryl Henderson back, which is so crazy to me that you suddenly have a three-headed attack with Akers, Michelle, and Henderson, and it's gonna it's gonna be really good. I mean, that's a really good running back room to have, and I'm ex I'm expect I'm expecting this this running game to go pretty crazy for the Rams, especially with the offensive line they have. Um, Joe Noteboom is notably out. He's their backup left tackle. So if an injury happens on that end, you're going to be a little bit more worried than you would if you were the Rams. <sighs> Obviously, Higby's out for the game, which really kind of hurts if you're a Rams fan, um, because Higby has been a playmaker really most of the season. He's been a huge reason why the Rams are in this spot. He's been really the number two or number three option on this offense and you're going to be without him kendall blanton is now his replacement and kendall blanton did a really really solid job against the 49ers last week the second year player out of missouri undrafted though he was mostly used as a blocking tight end all season all season he had four catches for 37 yards and then last uh two weeks ago he had ended up having three catches for 31 yards so, again, <laughs> he's had, in his uh, career, uh, he ended up having seven catches. Uh, but the postseason this year, he ended up having seven catches for 75 yards and a touchdown. I mean, he hasn't had a bad postseason, but again, he hasn't been used all that much normally. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how they work him into it. And I'd just like to shout out my boy from Penn State, Nick Scott. Nick Scott was a depth player basically the entire year. Uh, but then heading into the playoffs, Taylor, uh, Jordan Fuller goes down with an injury out for the rest of the season, right? So suddenly Nick Scott is thrown into a starting role. This is a man who's been mostly playing special teams, and he has killed it. He's made big play after big play. He legitimately was all over Gronk. Uh, Gronk did not make a single catch that was easy against the Bucks. Um he made a huge hit on Debo Samuel that knocked the ball out on a third and long. He has been a godsend to this Rams team. And honestly, I don't even remember thinking that he was that good at Penn State. There's a reason why he was a sixth-round draft pick. Or it might have been seven, honestly. He wasn't all that great. But yet he's come out in these playoffs and just kind of killed it. Um, and then on the other hand, for the Bengals. The Bengals are actually kind of lucky. Injury-wise, you're looking at it. Again, I don't think you're getting back Odd and Tate, which I thought you could have for most of the offs, uh, most of the playoffs, because it seems like he was going to be back every week. I don't think Odd and Tate's coming back, which I mean, it hasn't hurt you that much, but I mean, it does. I mean, he's the fourth best receiver on your football team, and it doesn't really hurt all that much. But if one of your receivers goes down, you would have loved to have Odd and Tate there. CJ Uzama is definitely going to play in this game. I, he's questionable. I don't see a reality where he doesn't see the football field. He is going to be on that field, and he's going to be giving it his all because it is a Super Bowl. Super Bowl is on the line. Every All hands on deck, and that would include Uzama. Uzama probably won't be as explosive as he was before, um, but you best believe it's better to have Uzama on the field than Drew Sample. Drew Sample is a strictly blocking tight end. He's not going to provide that much in the passing game. 
the interesting thing about the defense for the the Bengals is Jermaine Pratt, their starting middle linebacker, is out. And then three of their other depth players are out. So starting in the middle will either be Clay Johnston, uh, the backup weak side linebacker to Logan Wilson, the uh, 2020 seventh round pick out of Baylor, or it's going to be the backup to strong side linebacker Marcus Bailey and Keandre Jones. Keandre Jones, second year undrafted player out of Maryland. So if I am the Rams, I might be running this ball a lot. Not only, not only because I think my offensive line is better than their defensive line, um, but I also think their linebacker core is not as strong as it once was. I think Logan Wilson's a phenomenal player. Don't get me wrong. But you're going to be without Jermaine Pratt. You've been without Akeem Davis Gaither for most of the playoffs. Um, Marcus Bailey's not a name that pops off the board, and neither is John Stinner Jones. I mean, these are not names that everyone knows, and these are not phenomenal football players, so you should have an advantage if you're looking at it on the offensive line if you're the Rams. And then the other side of the thing, the offensive line versus defensive line of the Bengals, offensive line of the Bengals versus defensive line of the Rams, um, the offensive line of the, Ra the Bengals isn't good. Guys, there's a reason why everyone wanted him to pick Panay Sewell last year in the draft instead of Jamar Chase. And there, Jamar Chase has decided he has been a godsend. He has been phenomenal all year long. There's a reason why he was offensive rookie of the year. But there was also a legitimate reason why people wanted him to pick, take Panay Sewell, and it's because this offensive line's not good. It's just not. Um, and you're talking about a defensive line that includes Aaron Donald and Vaughn Miller, although he's technically a linebacker. But, like, Aaron Donald, Vaughn Miller, uh, Leonard Floyd off the edge. Um, Greg Gaines up the middle. Sebastian Joseph Day is coming back for this game. Ashawn Robbins. I mean, like, this is an off defensive line that is, it's really good, guys. It, it really is really solid. And I'm a little bit worried. I'm a little bit worried for that Bengals defense because, I mean, Bengals offensive line because, they're going to be coming after Joe Burrow. And this is defensive line's better than your offensive line. Um, I think this is going to be a close game. I, I think it is going to be really close. I think it's going to be a great Super Bowl, guys. But I think I think Sean McVay gets revenge. Remember, he was in a Super Bowl not that long ago, and he ended up losing because he didn't have enough offense. I think that changes here. I think they're going to win because of their offense. I think Matthew Stafford's going to win his first Super Bowl ring, and he's going to make a case why he should at least be in the Hall of Fame. Hey, everybody, this is GGB saying adios, amigos, and go Matthew Stafford.